guys, I'm Jeff Munson. Um, I'm currently in Ufa, Russia, which is about two hours southeast of Moscow by, by flight. And um, I've lived here three years, and I've lived a uh, total of seven years in Russia. I'm American uh, born and lived in America my whole life, except for a couple of years in, in England. But um, now I've lived in Russia seven years. And uh, it's been it's been a quite an experience. I got my first uh, taste of Russia when I was um, in 2011. I, I fought. So I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter, and I fought Fedor Emelianenko in a big fight uh, with Vladimir Putin's name and, and a lot of the, the government members of the Duma. And um, I really got my ass kicked in this fight. And uh, <laughs> But I went the distance, I broke my leg, and um, the next day, uh, Putin, like, he called me, and um, he was calling on the phone, actually, in the hotel, I started feeling sorry for myself, because I had a broken leg, I couldn't move, I lost this fight, I thought I was going to win, and um, they, they kept calling up, and they finally, one of my my corners answered the phone, and said, uh, their guy, this is like security, like, like, you know, answer the phone. And he's, he's like, he doesn't want to talk. Hands up. And then finally, people came to the door and, we, and they opened the door and said, No, it's not national security. Like, pick up the phone. <laughs> so the caller was actually Mr. Putin. And, um, you know, told me how like, he showed the Russian spirit and how, um, you know, showed the qualities of, of being like a Russian, like, soul kind of thing. And so um, that, like, started this loss, which was absolutely terrible for me. Um, we started like a chain of good events, um, just kind of at the right place at the right time. And then kind of ironically in the UFC, this was a terrible time to be leaving the UFC and a good time to be coming to the UFC because um, I had just fought for the UFC title a few months earlier. And um, for the like UFC title, the championship, and now I mean, these guys were making several million dollars um, to be at that level, to be the highest level of making, making that money. I fought for the UFC title. I took home $13,000 for fighting for the title. So um, so that was a misfortune, but it was uh, perfect timing for my time in Russia. And after I started doing some fights, when some fights had some, um, did some seminars. And, you know, ever since I was a kid, I had a fascination with Russia. And, um, you know, like, I liked history a lot. I read about the, you know, that Cold Revolution and this, and I was became interested in politics long before I came to Russia. Um, being, being from being from Seattle and having a lot of leftist people, the IWW, and people that um, like were like against the war and in this, and um, they really. It was, it was a great opportunity, you know, to come to a place that I always wanted to be. I jumped about, you know, being in Red Square and seeing Lenin's memorial and all this stuff. It was like how the dream come true. But then, um, you know, I got I actually got to meet the people that were, you know, part of it. I, um, actually, the, the day before I fought Fedor, I did a, a seminar, a free seminar for some anarchists who had heard that I was coming to fight and got a hold of me. And um, so I did that seminar. I was actually late for the press conference. I actually missed the press conference. So they were that quite good to speak. But um, it was like a really good experience. I mean I met, you know, like forty like anarchists from Russia. And that was like that was like kind of a dream come true. You know, it's like where in my opinion the you know they it all started. It definitely the first social revolution in the world happened here. So um Sorry, my dog. That's okay. And, um, <laughs> for me, it was for me, it was just like a dream. But uh, so anyway, so, so I fought, and I got to come to Russia a lot, and and working, um, uh, you know, where I got to work for IT for for a year and a half, and then uh, we're done works now, and then. Um, it just, it was kind of a dream, just like, this is the place where I started and, and working with, working with, working with people that are actually, um, you know, from kind of where it started from. So I was very, very excited about that. And now, you know, at this point I'm living here, I'll get into why I moved here uh, in a minute, but um, as a background, 
Um, you know, I grew up like really middle class. Um, my mom was a nurse. My dad worked at a penitentiary. <laughs> my dad worked at a penitentiary, and I was like, I always had what I wanted. I never went without. And I, I, you know, I supported America. I, I didn't know anything about, you know, I liked history, but I didn't know anything about the rest of the world, like as far as the like occurred events and stuff like that. Um, until my um, junior year of college, and uh, we had a professor for a social um, psychology class, and he came in, and he was from India, and he talked about how resources that were used for individual therapy and um, could be used for group therapy, how it'd be cheaper, more effective. He talked about how money is that would be sent to war. Um, you know, all of the, or the arm of the United States military was so big and, and how people were being cut out. He talked about the Federal Reserve and how the Federal Reserve, like, is a, is a bank, a private bank. You know, I never knew that stuff, but most Americans still actually don't. In a private bank, they have to pay interest on and, and like, money's borrowed. And they, like, it's just, they just opened my eyes to, um, what, what was actually reality. And it was the first time in my life that I'd ever, thought about any of this you know i i didn't i didn't like uh people being mistreated or you know i, I was poor or something like that I, I didn't like this the inequality but i didn't know what i could do about it and i definitely didn't think the united states was a real perpetrator i thought the united states was you know savior you know you always saw this oh the united states gives aid to guam or guatemala or um you know somali or something like this but um, I didn't realize all the strings attached to it or and stuff like that. So it was um, it was an eye opener anyway, this experience. And so I started, you know, this is before the internet. So I started, um, you know, checking out books on, on communism about, um, you know, more about the, the revolution and uh, the actual revolution in um, Russia and different movements around the world. And it became interesting consuming really um and so i was like i almost i i was a psychology major and i almost you know wanted to change the political science but at that point it was going to be two more years of school and i didn't have for it but um anyway I, after after this um, i became a psychologist got my master's in doctor degree in psychology worked with with people for a long time um and i you know i wrestled in, in college and, and tried to be a um, like all American, and I, I was like one match short. And then I tried to make the USA um, competitive team, not the, not necessarily the Olympic team, but the top six, the top six athletes in each weight class, like get our per diem every month and like a salary to, to live, to train. Um, and man, I, I I finished eighth like three different times, so like I was one match away three different times. And it was pretty heartbreaking. But I was like, you know, at this point, I was married, had two children, I'm working full time in a, in a psychology clinic, and then later a, a mental health hospital award. So um, there was just no time to dedicate myself. You know, I was after work, after coming home, eating dinner, and I spent time with the kids. I would, I would go to the gym and meet up with some high school guys, wrestlers or something like this. And I, so when I go, I compete, try to make the team um, at the world, at the U.S. championship every year. It was like, you know, I did well, but not, but not well enough. Um, and then, you know, MMA, we had, we had some MMA champions from my area in Seattle, which was just by luck. You know, I trained with them and then um, I went to Abu Dhabi where the world championship of Jiu-Jitsu was held every year. And uh, that's just like the first time I'd ever been out of the U.S. before, and I, I just came out of nowhere and won this, this championship, this world championship. And then my whole life changed, um, and I had to decide to, you know, whether to continue to be a psychologist or, or use this opportunity to be, um, you know, fight jiu-jitsu and do MMA fights. And um, I'd already done a bunch of MMA fights, which was successful out in, in Seattle. So I thought, you know, like I can always be a psychologist. I have, I'm young, you know, I'm 20 years old. I can I can always go back to be a psychologist, but I can't go back to be you know sports. Um, so so I ended up moving to Florida, 
took my wife and kids with me um, and became a fighter. And that, that just, my whole, you know, that changed the, the course of my life. So before this one fight, or this one uh, tournament. And um, after that, so that, I talk about the, my experience in, in college, which got me um, studying about and learning about uh, like socialism, um, anarchism, especially I, at this point, I consider myself an anarchist. Um, you know, I was going to IWW meetings in Seattle, meeting up with a bunch of leftist people in like Olympia and um, Seattle in this area and become involved in um, political movements, um, you know, protesting the, the, the war in Iraq and, and this. And, um, you know, at one point, I, I didn't know, you know, in Florida, there, were, there was definitely, there was an eye opener because there was, it was very, very poor in some areas, but very um, affluent in other areas. And it was very, very, the affluent areas were very, very right wing, um, extremist right wing. Now, I remember during the, um, like the Gulf War, or they, like this, there were, you know, people literally dressed in like Boca Raton, which is a very plush area, um, dressed like in mock Arab outfits with, you know, a wrapper on the head and this, like with signs, like they painted their faces. I mean, this is like, talk about blackface. I mean, they painted their faces like dark and were running around and acting, you know, with signs like saying, oh, if you support, you know, us, you're, you're like a communist or you're a terrible, you're a terrorist or something like that. So, I mean, just damn, like, I'm, I don't know like, I'm so angry, but anyway, it's very, it's very new experience being in Florida. Um, and during this time, I, I joined, ironically, it's called American Top Team, which I'm so part of, but there, um, it, it was all Brazilians. In fact, that was only the, out of probably 25 guys, there was only two, two Americans, all the rest were Brazilians. And, uh, and I think that one guy from, from Venezuela. So, um, anyway, yeah, so we, so I, I was fighting and um, my my other experience, my other like, life experience that, um, as far as social, like becoming um, more involved with socialism is, I, was, I went to Rio for a fight. And so I'm fighting in Rio, and actually, Finding Rio de Janeiro is illegal, so it was it was like a two hour drive from Rio, um, in kind of the mountains. It would be like the most beautiful country, beautiful scenery I ever seen in my life. You know, it's warm, it's beautiful, there's trees, it's the, the ocean wind, it's I mean just but it's not polluted. Um, so I went into this fight, I won the fight, I felt good about myself, and we drove back that night. And um, I was staying like in a probably four star hotel. So there's like a buffet, 24 hour buffet. I'm sorry. So I had one, one day, this, this last night before I have to leave back to Miami the next day. And I'm, I'm walking on the beach. So with just no shirt on, flip flops and shorts, feeling like really happy with myself. I just won. I don't remember how this was, was a pretty good payday. So I'm feeling pretty good and walking on the beach. And then, you know, it started to get late and I'm hungry. So like, oh, I'm going to go eat like three in the morning. And I'm walking back to the hotel and I get maybe like 50 meters from the hotel and I notice um, some people on a, on a mat, like a cardboard, you know, a box and we broke it down to sort of make like a mat. And they were close to the hotel, but like 20 meters from the hotel. So I kept walking and I know, and I saw that it was a woman it was and a woman and then a child with long hair, that was a girl, maybe seven or eight years old. And then a child, like the child, like one year old child, uh, boy. And um, the mother said something to the daughter, uh, the seven year old, eight year old. And then the daughter approached me as I was walking to this hotel. So I kind of slowed down. She came up to me and asked for a Rio, which at the time it was probably like 33, 32 American cents. And I, I was, I couldn't be more shocked because this, this was like, this was a Sunday night. And so I was thinking, uh, you know, this was like October or something like this. So I'm thinking this kid should be going to school tomorrow. Well, obviously he can't. It's three in the morning. And she's sleeping on a mat outside, outside, like literally outside on a, on a, 
a cardboard box um, with her mom and her one-year-old brother. And I was thinking, holy shit. I'm, I'm coming to, I'm, I'm walking back to a four-star hotel. I'm about to have a buffet, all I can eat. And what am I contributing to the world? I entertain people with fighting. I'm an entertainer. That's my contribution. And I'm getting big money. I mean, probably more money than, I, I mean, probably this lady's ever seen in her life or ever would see. And I'm getting one and well for one 15 minute fight. And um, I just went to the hotel and cried. I just like cried for a long time. And I just thought, like, what, what does this world come to? And like, but I'm part of it. It's not just this world is so awful and terrible and so unfair. It's like, I'm, I'm part of this. I'm, I'm contributed. Hey, baby, I'm doing the interviews for you. You're gonna have to wait, okay? You gotta wait, just, you gotta be patient. You gotta give me a few minutes, okay? I'm um, sorry. And um, <laughs> I thought, I'm, I'm part of this system and I, I have to do something about it. And, um, well, you know, when I came to, so later, when I came to Russia, um, and I fought the door, and then just everything happened, like, I mean, I, I don't know if it could have happened, like, being written in a better script for me for, for losing a fight, that, like, I thought, oh my god, I lost this fight, but, but it actually opened up my whole life in Russia, like, because, like, I didn't give up, I thought, I'm going to go, and then, the, after the fight, Fedor, who's like a god here, like literally, like for a long time after I fought Fedor for like a year, people were like, not like, oh, you're Jeff Munson, you're like, you're the guy who fought Fedor. You're the guy who actually met him and fought him. Wow, like, you're that guy. Like, that's how big of an icon he is. So, um, anyway, I, the met, he came into my dressing room, he's a nice guy. He came into my dressing room and he did a photo with me. He, he put his arm around me, hugged me, and I'm laying down, my legs broke and my face is smashed, but he likes hugging me. And this is like on the front page of like the Russia, the Moscow Times and like all of the internet and stuff. So the next day, like all of Russia saw like, it's not just a fighter, but it's a guy from Yale say that Fedor likes, so Fedor like gives his thumbs up to you. So this like opened up a, a bunch of Door, and then I, I came, like I said, I came back. Oh, you snake, nice. I came back. Um, then I was able to win some fights and had some, some seminars. Um, I, I did some political stuff, and um, it just it just snowballed. Then I was on the late, it's uh, Dancing with Stars. I was on like the late show, late show with, uh, um, but they'll have like one late show is on the show, and it just like, I was on a bunch of like television shows for ch children and a cooking show and this, so it became like bigger than life kind of thing just by being at the right place at the right time, really. And um, you know, and then during the interviews, I like obviously said nice things about Russia, like supporting Russia and this. So that it was. I mean, if I was a if I was a Russian guy, a Russian fighter with the same record, the same credentials, everything the same. Um, it, 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 none of this would, would be like this. You know, the, the fact is I'm from America, and of course, Russians have um, like a, a, a complex, kind of inferiority complex, because they think everybody is against them and doesn't appreciate them. Um, and especially now with this with this Ukraine conflict, that that's like tripled. But um, you know, if like I, an American came from America, lived in America, and had all the all the success and joys of being an American, like living in America, came to Russia and says, I like Russia, I like the Russian people, and I support, like, uh, you know, the people here, and, and I, you know, like coming here, and, and all this, I mean, that that's that's what it was, more than that, like being a fighter, you know, it was like someone, um, and then being on the shows and stuff, so, um, you know, I became, you know, quite famous, um, but it really, really, it was just a bunch of a bunch of for it was. It's one of those things where I I look at someone um, I make fun of on TV. That's like they're just like a Kardashian, like they're famous for being famous, but it's like they never did anything like like that. And it's um, you know I did things, but not to this level to of, to be like this. So 
Um, like I said, if I was just a regular fighter or something like that from Russia, I just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened like this. So it's given me a dream, really, because it gave me the opportunity to do things I normally wouldn't be able to do um, that I couldn't do in the United States. So back, back in the United States, um, this is during uh, the United States um, occupation and whatever, Afghanistan and Iraq and, and after the war, there's been war going on for years and years. And um, see, me and some of my leftist friends went to downtown Olympia, the state capital. We protested. Some of them got arrested. Um, they were, because the, the reason why Olympia is so important is that this is the, um, it's a port, it's a Olympia port, and this is where it's pretty close. It's maybe like 30 minutes from Fort Lewis, the military base there, the Army base, mm-hmm. and maybe an hour and some from McCord uh, Air Force Base, and it's also um, close to a bunch of smaller military installations. So when they want to send soldiers, tanks, weapons, cannons, all this stuff to Iraq, Afghanistan, or anywhere in the world, um, from these bases, it goes through Olympia, and so it's really crazy because in the middle of in the middle of the day, like the whole, they'll just the police will come through, the army people will come through, they'll put up like flashing lights, and the city just shuts down. The whole the main streets just shut down or blocked, and here come you know thousands of you know soldiers. Here come a bunch of tanks. Here come a bunch of like equipment for you know it takes anywhere from an hour and a half to longer, two hours, three hours, you know, get all this stuff through, get to the port. And so and one of these one of these we we had heard that they were they were coming because our we got a call that they were like on the down I five corridor that there was a bunch of military equipment, so we suspected they were coming to the port. So we went and blockaded the entrance to the port, like hand, you know, hand in hand holding. And um they just they just went and read some like said hey if you resist we're gonna, we're gonna arrest you uh, either no comment or whatever and they just picked off each person at the end person at the end until it was me and one other one other young guy i'm um, holding hands and um the guy came up to me he goes look jeff i know who you are but we're gonna arrest you and i said i'm not gonna let you take me but I'm not going to fight you, but I'm just not, I'm not going to punch you. I'm not going to hurt you or try to, but I'm not going to, I'm going to resist. I'm not going to let you just, I'm not going to walk away and let you put me on a, a canyon and take me to the, to the jail. Um, he said, okay, we're just going to tase you. Like, what's your choice? as you do? And I said, look at, look at, there's probably 200 people watching and many of these people with cell phones, like taking like photos, taking videos. So you come up to me and talk to me and then I say I'm not going to go and you come up and just case me I fall down and you drag me away how's that going to look it's going to be on the news tonight and um so he went away talked to his like superior talk about it, and they ended up like driving around us because <laughs> we can't remember we're just two guys in the middle but they just drove around us and <laughs> we got this nothing at all <laughs> so <laughs> but so we later on you know we went um you know, we did some other protests. I was working at this time. I was working really a lot with the IWW. And, you know, obviously it was frustrating because it didn't seem like we were getting much done. And, I, and it, it was probably true. We weren't getting much done. And right on top of some much. And, um, you know, there's there some things going on. There were, there were people, at this time, there was a lot of anti-capitalist movement there, too. And a lot of banks were being... A uh, lot of banks were being broken into, not for stealing stuff, but like just the window smashed and, you know, or spray paint and stuff like that. So, like, the police were becoming more aggressive and violent um, dealing with protests and and um, demonstrators and this. So there was, like, less less uh, tolerance for, for any kind of protest, even peaceful protests. And at one point, yes, in the magazine, because um, I was five, I was going to fight uh, uh, for the title. I was going to fight uh, Tim Sibley for the title. And um, so they came and interviewed me and said, hey, you're fighting Tim Sibley for the title. Um, we want to you know, send some a photographer and a, a journalist down and spend like two days with you. 
um, or two and a half days with you. And I said, no, it's okay. So I came down to the, you know, stay at a hotel and they just were with me all day until the evening. And I go home and, you know, they're with me in my car. They're with me all day to see what I do. You know, and so they got to see what I do. Like, okay, like I, at this time, when, you know, we went to IWW meeting. I went to, you know, we had a, like a protest, like trying to stop some, unsuccessfully stop um, some more, like, Soldiers and whatever, go, you know. And I want to, I do want to say, we, I man, we had a um, campaign where we raised probably forty-five thousand signatures um, from residents of of, of uh, Olympia, saying we do not want you sending troops and stuff to the middle of our city where our children, mm-hmm. like or whatever, watch this, watch like like what like you, you shut down your city, so. You can send troops and and to war like that and whatever. And I'm like, this is like unacceptable, you know. And then we have we had so many same shirts. They didn't even look at it. It wasn't even acknowledged. We didn't even get a response. Not even like, yeah, okay, we took your single single count, but we're still gonna continue, or we'll, you know, we're still gonna do our part. And they didn't just like, didn't even all. I think they just like. Like whatever, like you may just toss it in the garbage or whatever. But anyway, we got no response. So this this um, did uh, sit very well um, with a bunch of us. So anyway, when ESPN came down, we had planned to go to the state capitol and um, do a protest. And the protest was going to be when the legislators came out of uh, were adjourned from their from their uh, um, their meeting. It would be like about four o'clock um, on this like Thursday afternoon, um, and this was like I mean, this was like November, so it got dark, you know, maybe like four thirty. Um, so we, my plan was to meet my friend. We we're going, we're going, we're going to spray paint the Capitol building. Um, <laughs> and so we bought the spray paint. We got everything. We didn't, we didn't wear masks. We didn't wear disguises. We didn't do nothing. We just went down there. And um, on our on our way down there, my friend—it was just me and my friend at this point, only two of us—and my friend got actually arrested, like on the way for um, an outstanding outstanding warrant, and I can't remember for what. But I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if it had to do with demonstrations or what. But he got like picked off, and so um, I have this photographer, this journalist with me, and I tell them, I go, look. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to do it, but there's a good chance I'm going to get arrested for spray painting uh, because I'm doing it in uh, not broad daylight, but I'm doing it, you know, I'm not, not doing it at night, I'm not doing it, in, you know, secret. I mean, people are walking out of the, walking out of the Capitol building. And I said, no, 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 we'll, we'll go with you. And I said, okay, but it's your risk. I mean, don't, I can't be responsible. And I said, no, oh, okay, we'll go. So I went there and um, it was about, I don't know, uh, 4.45, something like this, and they, and they were going to come out at 5. So I spray painted, like, no war. I painted, I painted the anarchy side. I painted the peace side. I say uh, no poverty. But I, like, did big red letters, like, big, big on the, on the set top of that. And then I left. Um, and so, I mean, notice that nobody, and people saw me, but they also saw the photographer and the journalist with me, like, filming me do it. So I think they, like, saved me at the time because... These these people um, that watch this were like, no, it, it's just like some kind of it, they're doing this for some show or something. Like, I don't know. They thought it was legit because I was being filmed doing it. Um, so anyway, nothing happened. You know, nothing like I didn't call. They get arrested. Nothing. I just drove home. Um, anyway, but they they printed the story in January. It was like three months later they printed the they printed the the story and the day I, I was actually in North Carolina and the day after the story came out I saw like the front of Yahoo News on my phone and said like fifty thousand dollar a warrant for Jeff Munson for the one I read on my oh my gosh so um, my wife my wife was at home with my two kids um. And I was. This was a Friday. And I wasn't going to be coming home till Monday. And um, the police came to the house. They had like, I don't know, ten or fifteen people of the same SWAT team, you know, had around the house from the windows in the woods. 
you know, knocking on the door with Kevin with like guns and stuff. And my wife's like shocked, you know, like, oh, oh my gosh, oh my God. Um, so she called me and said, Jeff, the, the, there's a SWAT in here. Like, look at me and stuff. But actually, I talked to the captain. I said, look, I'm not coming home. So I'm coming home on Monday. I'm not running away from you. I didn't do this in like disguise to begin with. I knew at some point there would be some consequences. So I'll be home on Monday. Just don't come back to my house. Don't, please don't scare me to the court. I'm scaring my wife. I'm coming back Monday on a flight. I didn't tell her where, where it was because I wanted to be them waiting at the airport. But um, I said I'll be back Monday from and I'll turn myself in. So I made a deal. So he and they they upheld the deal. But um, unfortunately, I got I got arrested because of this warrant. It was like a you know initial. I got I got ended up getting arrested in North Carolina. And, uh, I spent uh, spent five days in uh, jail. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Right. I got, I got, uh, my wife is in a different city and I'm home with two kids and grandma. So, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so this, so I got, so anyway, but you know, um, and then I ended up, um, during this, uh, also before, uh, I went in, um, because the, my, my son was in high school and the recruiters were coming to my son's high school and recruiting these 18 year old kids, seniors. Um, you know, when they graduate and trying to get them to join them. I mean, this is right in the middle of war. They're going to be sent straight to Iraq, straight to Afghanistan, straight in the middle of conflict. The 18 year old kids, the whole life ahead of them, going to be killed or maimed or put at, you know, serious risk. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and also killing other people at 18 years old, just coming out of high school. And this, to me, this was an atrocity. Um, and I um, went and talked to one of the recruiters at the recruiting center, and he's like, he basically just admitted to me, he's like, get the hell out of here. Like, who are you? Like, this is a, this is a U.S. Army. He's like, who are you to, you know, whatever. So I, I, I this time I didn't come back on the cover night, but I, I, I just smashed this place. I got broke in, like, spray painted. And then they had a vehicle outside, too, like, with the Army thing on it. And I, like, popped all the tires with a knife, and I... Or slash tires, and I, I got a lot of damage. Like, you know, and I was like, you know, and it, you know, how I, I justified not only because they were doing wrong, but I thought, you know what? If they're out of commission for two days, three days, maybe that's one less two person or five less people that they're able to recruit that are going to go to uh, Iraq or whatever. And these are like five people I'm saving from getting, or one even one person saved from you know, getting put in this situation. So I felt absolutely nice about this. So nice that I did it again at a different recruiting station um, a couple of nights later. And, um, so anyway, they did have here, this, I was, and I, I didn't disguise myself or anything, um, but anyway, when all this came out with um, the, the um, spray paint and stuff, then these other charges, these other two charges, like came out too. They 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 put the videos together. They said, I mean, that all made sense to them. Like, oh, it's the same guy. So anyway, three three felony charges. <laughs> and um, so anyway, they, they did a they looked at a, a deal where I admitted I did it, which I mean they had me anyway. Um, and I served three months in jail and paid. Well, I was supposed to pay like a twenty eight thousand dollar fine for. Um, the the spray painting and, and and the other stuff to like pay back, you know the damage I've done. But um, uh, I was paying like a hundred dollars a month for a, a couple of years, and then when I start coming to Russia, I'm like, I'm never going back to live in the U.S. anyway, so I'm, I'm not going to pay this. And I just like anyway, so I'm not paying. But um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the interest was more than my. I was like paying hundred bucks a month. The interest was like more than that. From I was like, it was getting higher and higher every month. I'm like, so I'm like, mm, I don't think I'm paying this. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> anyway, like so, this this gave me a great opportunity. Um, I had another excuse for like when I came to Russia because, um, you know, I burned a lot of bridges in the U.S. as far as um, employment and and this, you know, have being a felon. Um, and also during this time, during the um, the war, like I just didn't pay taxes. Like I just didn't pay any taxes for eight years. And um, <laughs> the first year, I wrote, I actually wrote, um, and I found out it's not illegal not to pay the taxes. I didn't, I didn't know this. It's not. It's illegal not to file. You can file. So the first year I actually filed, but I filed, and I didn't know this was okay to do. But I filed and said I'm not paying taxes because of this war, and I'm not paying for. I'm not being like held responsible for contributing to this war because that's what you use the money for. Um, I didn't get a response, so I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> and so for the next seven years, but I didn't file. I didn't file the next seven years at all. I had nothing. I didn't even send a, a letter saying I'm not paying. So um, at some point, um, I was at home with my wife, and the um, the IRS literally showed at my door, like uh, the IRS man, and then an armed uh, like agent, and um, said we got to talk. And so they, uh, you know, they like basically confiscated my my uh, assets from my bank and, and then took money from my wife's like salary and stuff like that and then um like we're like we're taking money wherever they could get they took some items and sold and this and that so um he said if you don't do this you're gonna go to jail and i want to go to jail and this time it was going to be not three months in jail but like years in jail and i thought i'm not it's not worth like uh like losing my you know time away from like living so anyway this this happened so but at, at this point when i was in russia like going to russia going to russia um i thought man why why can't i i mean i can live in russia you know why, why not just live in i end up getting a you know because of the popularity i was able to get a passport a russian passport vladimir putin um gave me a gave me a russian passport um as a dual citizen and uh, this like opened up more avenues, and um, it was just you know I I ended up working with uh, as a side note I worked with the Communist Party for probably two years, and not a good experience. It was like I said it was my dream. I, I um, had a fascination with Russia when I was younger. I liked history. I liked you know read about the uh, October Revolution and this. And then when I actually learned about socialism, learned about communism, and I was like, wow, this is not like the actual Communist Party I'm like working with. They gave me like some official title as um, foreign, like athlete, correspondent, something. I forgot what it was. Like some kind of official thing, non salary, whatever. And I thought, oh, this is like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm actually working with the Communist Party. Um, but for two years now, you know, I've been to Ghana a bunch of times, you know, like taking pictures with Zagana, meeting Zagana at, at cheese and wine dinners, meeting Zagana here, meeting Zagana, you know, helping with their elections, like everything. And I, I thought, I know they're using me. I know they're like, I'm just like a, you know, a puppet in a way, but I want something too. So as long, I'll just play along. I'll just, you know, I want to work with them because I want them to open free children's sports schools for me. In different in different cities, um, and they kept promising and promising. And they, I mean, obviously, they have huge money for this. They have the they have the um, means to do this, and they just kept promising, but not doing, promising, not doing. Um, and they finally said, "Okay, we'll open one in Moscow first, and then we'll go from there." I'm like, "Okay, well, one is better than none to start with. We'll you know we'll do it'll do well, and they'll see how successful it is, and we'll see that." It's good because, it, I mean, in the news, like Jeff Munson, with the help of the Communist Party, opens free children's school for kids for sport. I mean, I go, I go, you understand how good this would look for you, how good of a, a news, you can't, you couldn't pay for this kind of media coverage, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's the best for your, for your party. Um, but they just, they just dragged and dragged, and I, I, at the last cheese and wise dinner, it was like a, it was like a photo, <laughs> they had like photographs from, of Che Guevara, um, you know, during that Cuban Revolution, and and um, Fidel Castro, and like old photos of Stalin, all this stuff, cool stuff. Um, 
And I just said, I said, look, we got to meet tomorrow and set up this, the plan for the school. And I said, okay, okay, okay. So we did all the, the photos, all the stuff. And the next day, um, they just go, oh, we can't make it. And I, I said, that's fine. So I called Channel One and I said, hey, I want to do an interview. And they're like, okay, when, today? And I said, okay. And I came and I said, <coughs> look, there, I, I love socialism. I love the history of the USSR and the fact that the, this is the first social revolution and there's still communism here. Um, you can see it every day by in the people, in the people on the streets, how they help each other, how they care for each other. And, I, and this is like one of the things, this is why I love Russia right now. Um, I'm, I'm in Ufa in the center. Um, I was out with my daughter a little bit ago and, you know, she, which, which she falls down, somebody's there picking her up. If, you know, people are like helpful and and caring about each other and there's this you know i'm sure and, and some and a lot of people the older people who lived under uh, the communism and now said man we sure miss how it was in communism but i can just imagine how nice it was our comedy if i think this is so nice now i can't imagine how you know much society was like just like uh how much solidarity and um like a communal respect for each other society have back in. Um, so, you know, that, that I just, I love, love this about Russia. But anyway, I did the interview and I said, man, there's communism in Russia all over the place. I see it, I feel it. Um, I see it every day and how people respect, respect and treat each other. But I said, in the main communist party in Moscow, in the state Duma, there are no communists. And, um, and so, the Communist Party did not like this, so we broke we broke ties. Um, and then uh, I ended up moving to Krasnogorsk, working with the mayor there, and he had me uh, run to be a deputy, run for the election. So I became a deputy in a uh, city outside Moscow called Krasnogorsk. Um, and so for two years, we we started a, a litter a litter campaign and a recycling campaign where there was absolutely no recycling in this whole city and when we left every apartment um, building and every complex and every business had um, recycling um, sent like recycling place and it was taken recycling center and um, it was hooked up to the main it was like all driven to Moscow to the recycling center so this was good and we, all, we also opened a free school for children and adults a sports school um for you know, to, to uh, training kids and stuff like that. So um, that was that was good. I was really happy with this. But um, the thing is, it's like you know, when your dream, when you're having these dreams of um, like of socialism and, and bring communism and, and working with this, um, working in a, a small city outside of Moscow and setting up a recycling campaign and opening one school is not really your lifelong dream. So. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, just uh, the mayor um, is from this area called Bashkortostan, where I'm in now, and Uf is the main city here. And so he was called to be the governor. He, Putin called him and said, hey, we're, we need a, we have an opening. I want you to be the governor of <clears throat> Bashkortostan. So where you're from, it's a dream for you. So this is the second largest um, district in, in all of Russia by, by land, by land area. And so he came here, and, and then after a few months, he invited me here to open uh, children's schools here. So there's a lot more people here, a lot bigger area, um, a lot more opportunities. So um, I was able to move open 27 free sports schools for kids here. Um, we also have connections with uh, the Detsky Dome, the, the orphanage here. We also have um, two schools for that uh, deaf. Um, that we work with them. So, um, and during this time, I was able to go to, I've, I've been going to, we'll talk later about this, but uh, Donetsk and Lugansk, and we opened a school in, in Donetsk as well, free sports school for kids, uh, grappling sports school, Jiu Jitsu. So that, that was like a big accomplishment and like uh, something we're, we're happy with. And so, um, but recently, um, I became a deputy, I was elected to the deputy. And so now we have like a bunch of huge projects. And I, I when I talked to Roddy or I talked to the governor, Roddy Groff, I said, 
man, I, I really, I would like to be a deputy, but if you're, you're wanting me to do this, this is what I want to do. Um, you know, I want to open a, a center for, um, cause I did this in America. I didn't open it, but I worked at it. I, a center for, I help them for people with like problems with drugs and alcohol, or maybe they lost their identification. Here, if you don't have a passport, the, the national passport, you can't get a job, you can't, you can't get on a bus. In some instances, you definitely can't, um, you can't get into some buildings. I mean, you, you, you're stuck. Um, that maybe they need a passport, maybe they need to go for a job, maybe they need to go to the doctor and like don't have enough money or whatever to see a doctor or afraid or something like this. So we have a, a nurse that's going to come two times a month. Um, for a couple of hours and see see people that come here too, and like maybe just a cup of coffee, maybe um, just to talk, um, find a job, something, whatever, whatever the problem. We try to find the resource for these people um, to get connected with somebody who can help them. If we can't help them directly um, with whatever issue they have, so this was this was important. So the center, so this is a process being open. Um, we also asked for. Um, to open a, uh, a homeless shelter. You know, I, I was shocked by this today, like 1,000, like 470 people died in Ufa. Just the city of 1.3 million people, you know, like over 1,300 people died in Ufa last winter from cold related illnesses, like being sick from being out, not being homeless, or um, not having like proper for food, not be able to access for medicine because they're on the streets, whatever it was. Um, anyway, like 13, this, this is huge number of people, and especially when you very rarely see people sleeping, like never. I, I'll, I'll, I'll go as far as saying, if I never see people sleeping outside on the street. So I'm like, where do they stay? Oh, uh, yeah, very good. Sweet. I, I, when I'm done, I can do it. Okay, so don't do that. Nobody doesn't like that, though. I'm just scared. Okay. Um, and so, so we're working, we want to open this. Um, so that thing, and we want to open more schools. We want to open uh, more schools so we have 100 free schools. The best schools sound so big. And, and these little, there's villages, you know, hours away, and spread out all over this huge, vast area. Um, they don't have any sports at all. So our goal is to open 100 sports schools free, um, open these, the help center, open the, the homeless shelter with food. And then also um, twice a month, we want to hold uh, dances in, uh, in Ufa, in this big sports complex um, for, for kids 12 to 18 to come and like dance and like, you know, have, have, there's a DJ that's a very, very got a hold of a DJ that's willing to do this for free. Um, we play, you know, the latest music and, you know, have punch and cookies or whatever like that, you know, in a safe place, be able to socialize with your friends. So we think this is going to be a big thing. So it's just, it's just these little things that isn't bringing communism, isn't bringing socialism back to, um, Russia, but it is these things that have its roots in, in socialism, um, that we think is so important to bring to the community because when you make a computer uh, uh, society healthier by even the littlest bit, you're making you're making it better, safer, um, healthier for everybody within the community. So you know it's like a, you know it's like the domino effect. When when one thing is better, then that affects everything else. So um, this is our this is our goal. This is our you know, dream to do this, but we have the, the, the back, the backing of our the governor. So, yeah, but you got to turn that music off soon. Hey, Jeff, we, we have um, the, Jeff. But have this to, is, this is our goal now. Jeff. Um, we have to and then in three on. years, I would like to be, <laughs> yeah. um, I can, I can be part, or I can, I'm eligible to run for the state doing So that's my, my goal is to run for the state doing work. Now I can affect, you know, a few million people, but in the state Juma, with the right, you know, being, uh, you can affect 160 million people, you know, with, mm -hmm. with policies and, 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 and this. So, and I, you know, I, I found a lot of people, um, I'm working with that, um, maybe not identify as communists. There's a few that actually do, but are they definitely, um, carry the tradition of the, 
the social and communist um, attributes from the USSR and, and definitely have um, inherited that from their parents. You probably inherited that from their parents. So it's, it's uh, definitely still part of society, even if it isn't like official. And so this is like, for me, this is just the absolute um, dream. You know, I, I had my time um, as a fighter. You know, I had my time fighting, you know, you know famous, had you know, money. I was in the United States with a nice house, a nice car, and I had definitely more money. And now I have, you know, I don't have a car, I don't have a, I don't own a, own a house or anything like that. Um, I have definitely less money, but I'm much, much happier because I have the opportunity to um, help other people. Now, you know, a lot of people have helped me. Um, I've, I've had... I couldn't have asked for a, a better life as far as being able to travel, meet different people, see different situations, see different cultures, meet people who uh, like are, are wanting to help other people and giving me inspiration. So like given all of this, given the fact I'm in Russia and I was given citizenship here, I was, I was able to um, have the opportunity to live here and make a, make a life here. Um, I have, I think I just have an obligation um, at this point to help other people and to like bring my own uh, political ideals as much as I can to, to, uh, to Russia, to, to the city I live in, to, to my, my community. Hey, John, so this yeah. is like, can, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Sorry. We, yeah, can you? We've got to move to lunch now, but, uh, I really appreciate you giving us the time. Uh, to talk and everything it was really interesting. Let's, let's yeah!